Hello and welcome to the Lens at 177 and recently the issue of casino, whether Fiji should have one has been in the topic, has been in the news for long and today we are bringing that topic to this program. And with me is Sandeep Singh, a consultant with the David Group uh, who has been spearheading the move to bring the concept of a casino in Fiji. Uh, first, uh, welcome to the program Sandeep. Uh, and, uh, First question to you is uh, our neighbors in the Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, uh, uh, I think Vanuatu, they have casinos. Uh, why, 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 why should Fiji have one? Uh, first of all, Anishis, thanks for giving us this opportunity to speak out. Uh, to your question, uh, well, there's a question I might ask the government and the people of this country, that uh, if the, our neighboring country has those casinos, uh, my question will be the same thing, why should Fiji do not have that casino? Uh, so that's the people have to decide. I think we are turning into the new era. Every nation looking for opportunity to attract the investors. And if Fiji is looking to attract investors, I think we cannot work on our condition. We need to work on amicable understanding with the investor condition. And it's not easy to have investor to, to come to our country. It's very difficult to look for investors because of having a lot of uh, issues. So I think that um, for me, it's in high time that we can look into that having casino in our country. Mm. Two things happened last week. The Prime Minister made a statement that everything is on hold until the government draws up a policy. And coupled with that, uh, on social media it was released that uh, you, Sandeep Singh, uh, are currently subject of a bankruptcy filing in the Magistrate Court. Uh, my question first on the statements by the Prime Minister. How did you uh, take that announcement? Uh, how did you assess the announcement by the Prime Minister? Uh, actually, I think I already made a press release regards to the statement of the Prime Minister. I accepted the decision of the Prime Minister. And I think this what the David Group was doing. It was initially doing the consultations, getting the, the, the report of and the views of the community and institution. And the uh, decision of the Prime Minister was correctly accepted it because this is how what we wanted, regulation to be set up, the guidelines to be put on, so at least it benefits benefits the community. Mm -hmm. Now going to the second question is regarding the FDB issue and I, I, I know very disappointing that people using court documents and putting on a social media, I do not know how they, those documents been done. But yes, uh, the, the, the matter is at the moment with the court, uh, the lawyers are handling that, that matter. I, I remember when I was in Fiji in 2014, uh, there was a small loan borrowed from FDB Bank and I believe when I left uh, Fiji it might be overlooked. But upon my arrival in last year, October, I personally went to uh, the FDB Bank and I asked them uh, that there is a loan that I had previously, can you provide us a statement for me to clear that. But rather than a statement, uh, it was the court document which was, uh, was, uh, was actually uh, brought to me by the bailiff and I received that. And uh, since that, everything went to black and white. It was an emailed uh, exchange between the, their lawyers and also the bank. Uh, and uh, at the moment, that matter is with the court. Mm. It's a situation like that, uh, and also discussed widely on social media, that Sandeep Singh is a fraud. Mm. Uh, uh, why should the Fiji government be dealing with him? How do you respond to that? Well, uh, I don't know that if you did not uh, pay uh, the loan amount uh, to the bank because it was overlooked and we're doing all things that is legally, I don't know how you call a person a fraud. Uh, so this is a very you know, um, uh, way that people are addressing. And it is very sad for me because uh, the people that who is addressing a fraud those people in a couple of months ago, they were shaking hands with me and having coffees with me, taking advice of me. And those are the same people who are now turning back. And if I looked at the people who are criticizing and saying those words, are somehow and somewhere are connected with the politicians, political parties, or either they are a former politicians. So it's a sad part uh, to, to me, sir. On social media, you have mentioned it's uh, particularly Indians of Fijian descent or Indo-Fijians who are targeting you. Why do you make that assumption? 
Uh, well, if I look at some of the comment which was made, uh, I haven't seen uh, that uh, the Itoke brothers and sisters has made any ugly comments in, in the matter. But if I looked at the comment, it was uh, the, the Indo-Fijians, uh, as I said initially, they might be connected with the political parties and affiliated, has, mode, has mostly made those, uh, these ugly comments. Now, for me, you know, I returned back Fiji after nine years. The way that I look at uh, it's I, how I concluded those is one is the jealousy and uh, second I think people sees that I, I, I want to grow in this sector because I really want to create a development. So there is a lot of hindrance that's going on. So that's what I have found after all the comments I'm assessing. Mm -hmm. But mostly I block a lot of things because I really do not want to distress myself by this. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing, I'm doing right. Bringing investment in the country is not a crime. I'm working with the government so the proper guidelines be set up and nothing wrong in that. Mm. Uh, you have put a you have floated a figure of two billion dollars uh, for yes, this sir. investment. Uh, first of all, uh, this David Group. Can you elaborate uh, where are they located? Who are the shareholders? Mm. And where are they going to get this two billion dollars? Okay. Uh, so I, I'll address you where I got this project. I, I got this project sometime this year. Uh, this year, August. Uh, the project that last year. Uh, no, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, okay, sorry. I got this project last year in August, and it was presented to me uh, by a person that, uh, like, recommended by a friend, and the person who brought a couple of investment in this country. Uh, and therefore, I could trust uh, the person to actually take over that project. And then with him, I, I traveled to uh, the, uh, their uh, businesses, which is established in Macau. I visited Macau and uh, spoke with the group uh, CEOs and shareholders. So there are Chinese investors. These are the Chinese group. So some lives in China and some lives in Macau because they operate the businesses. In China, they operate a real estate business and tourism. In Macau, they operate casino business. So I visited them. I looked at that. I look at their project, I look at their businesses, and then I accepted this project. Now, going back to the money, of course, before I take this, I need to do a due diligence because uh, it will be a large project. I don't want to be a fool to the people. Request was made with all the financials of the company to make sure that they have the ability and credibility to invest. We do not want this to become just talk of the show. So, audited financial reports were submitted. We requested the bank statements, which is also submitted that has all been prepared for uh, application to the government when it will be submitted to the government based on all that we saw there is a sufficient amount of money that the group has cash sitting with them to invest in this country mm -hmm. so therefore then I accepted this project and taken further for consultation if I were to ask you to name these companies who are putting up the money will you be able to do that now the name of the company is David groups uh, that is the name of the company. Okay. Uh, I but can't uh, pronounce the names of the shareholders. I need to get the whole structure of telling who the CEOs and all these things are. Uh, so it, if it's a request, we can give it to you, the entire shareholders of the company. Please. And uh, given the current uh, uh, status of this issue, yes, uh, the impact of the investment, uh, 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 David Group, do they exist on the website or on the internet? Well, I think some of the... Because uh, we couldn't find yes, a I David Group. Yeah, uh, understood. So that puts the questions on mm. whether this company, this group is legitimate or not. Actually, uh, there's the same question I asked when uh, I took this project, why you are not existing on the, on, on the website. So, obvious reason was that, uh, and I accepted those reasons, and I, I have looked at some other companies in the same context, people who are operating a casino business, they try to keep them silent, eh? not to be publicized or putting websites and things are the thing. So this is what has been uh, informed to me, and I have gone through other casino operators that's operating in Macau, they are the same sense, they don't exp uh, advertise on a website and things. But uh, uh, there is a site that was given to us where the information about the company and the directors and everything there, which I'll share you by email mm. the information. So are you finding out it's different to deal in uh, Fiji when you don't have information like this, whether wh where critics can log onto the website and find out mm. who's supporting the project and things would not go as it has gone uh, currently? 
Well, I don't think so because the way for me it looked at when it comes that the two question of investment is basically is there is the money is clean when it comes to your country when the money comes from the bank which is saved in the bank account uh, that is automatically says it's a clean money what we call right and any investor from any country when they transfer their money they transfer officially to, through the reserve bank and all, all, all other channels available if in that aspect if I look at then I don't think so anything uh, you know even there is a negative comments about the investment it doesn't matter because all investors are duly uh, due diligence will be done by the government of the day uh, mm -hmm. as well and uh, as I said that uh, if any clean money comes through the bank to bank transfer uh, we have a very strict money laundering law in our country you can't just you know throw in cash in this country so there's nothing wrong uh, there's nothing wrong for me what benchmark did you did you use to ascertain that the people you are dealing with who are representing the David group are legit mm -hmm. and are not money launderers okay so the 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 first person who introduced this project to me uh, he's the same guy who brought the investment of Nalangi hotel in this country uh, also Tenji cement so those both uh, investors from the Zhejiang province of China and that was his initiative that brought in here so if looking at that person is already doing that in the country has brought the large investment for the development of our nation I don't see that there is any issue where the money laundering is concerned again as I said the cash is in the bank and if the bank uh, the transfer will be done and officially done through the bank through reserve banks terms and condition and there is no money laundering issue uh, or element could be put into uh, that uh, uh, proposal. So the current government is aware of your f uh, source of financing for this project should a uh, license is given. Okay. Uh, when uh, when uh, you know there is a, um, a document required when you submit for a license. Uh, in that uh, document requirement of submitting for application of a license, there's all documents that has to be submitted. So one is the audited financial report, two is the source of funds, three is about their uh, profiles, their operation and all those kind of things. So everything will be included when it will be submitted for the license. Mm. Uh, in, in 2012, the previous government gave a casino license to a company that wasn't able to start the casino business. So why do you think there has been such huge backlash knowing that Fiji had issued a license? Well for me I see the uh, the previous government did not uh, the way I look at that there was not much freedom of people to speak out against what is going to happen or what the government was doing but look at the current government because current government came with the aim of the consultative system so they want to consult with the people and people has given freedom to speak out of criticizing of the things that happens so I see that that might be the reason that previously in uh, 2012 when the license was issued issued to 100 cents they took a license and then they were going around to uh, to look for money for investment and maybe their voice was not raised by people just because of the, the type the government it was there but today I look at uh, that these are the freedom of the people to speak out to criticize the government of the project but one thing that we all must careful or must sure that uh, we you know, criticism shall not be, uh, you know, for everything that you do. Either you do good or you do bad, the people are still criticizing it. We should be strong. We should be strong of thinking that if that benefits our people of this country and we can help uplift the lives of the people, I think the government has uh, a courage to make the decision uh, and putting those criticism aside. Uh, uh, people playing cards in Fiji, uh, uh, game of chance, uh, that's that's gambling uh, yes. in, in one way. Yes. Uh, compare that to what casinos are. Uh, how do you read into this that people are not opposing the small gamblers on the streets, uh, but are opposing a big uh, investment proposal like yours? Well, initially, as I said, that I saw that most of oppose or the criticism came. Those are the people connected with somehow it with with the politics or political parties. Uh, I look at in two aspects. One is that there are a lot of people might do not want the government of the day to do something, uh, you know, uh, something big that will develop the country. They might not have a chance to actually, uh, you know, throw criticism against the government. And the second thing that I look at, these gamblings are happening from last 40 years uh, when we were young in festivals as you said that we have all the gamblings I don't see addiction of people 
people they were not did not be addicted because if people were addicted all those sort of gambling so we will have grown in gambling but we have gone less and less we have lotos we have currently price water house that betting and horse i even do not see that people are addicted to that so when it going back to casino uh, you know the perception of people that people will be addicted to the gambling i don't see that because what i see it's a matter of choice it's a matter of choice people have had uh, you know other choices to be done we know cigarette kills us but we smoke right because it's a matter of choice that we do so in in my uh, in in my response to that is that uh, gambling is there from long time uh, casino is something that might attract people because it's a large investment and things like that but it will not cause addictions to people we are only less than 800000 people it is very easy to control and regulate uh, yes and what uh, and on what authority do you base this claim that it will not impact okay so we have few reports we have taken so one report we have when we visited macau uh, recently we have did this and this was a study trip where i invited the uh, some of the uh, priest from the methodist church to visit with us so we went to couple of institution institutions that make uh, uh, gambling addiction uh, you know uh, assessments annually there's a uh, macau university there was a statement came out from one of the catholic ch- institution that does that and in looking at all this aspect i haven't seen the addiction of uh, the youth addiction it was basically has been actually going lower it was only minimum of like 5.5 or 6% of the youth addictions right for that so you don't you can see that a country where the gambling has around 42 license hundreds of casinos and you can't see the addictions of people that put in uh, to be in casino so i i on that report and then you going back to a country like singapore Singapore is a casino which is open to everybody. Uh, foreigners are allowed to enter for free. Uh, the citizens need to pay hundred dollars when they enter. Uh, despite of that, you have you know people know that a lot of people from Fiji has travelled to Singapore. They know there is no addiction of casinos there. Mm. So those are the assessment that I'm coming up. That's why I said that uh, this matter was just been you know popped up uh, during the the Christmas Eve time. But all these assessment and reports are actually compiled at the moment before we submit to the government of the day. We wanted to have the all the opinion, the views be answered, and all the and the negative impact or negative views. people are raising we wanted to come up with the evidence to support that's the reason i did not even apply for a license because i wanted that when we give it to government we have this sort of comprehensive report mm. sandeep thank you very much we will take a short break and continue the discussion thank okay. you we were around when the deed was first signed we were around when the first car engine roared we were around when the very first was crowned through devastations jubilant celebrations and the milestones we will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first welcome back and today we are talking to sandeep singh who's representing a coso type of company who, who uh, which wants to bring the concept of casino to fiji sandeep uh, on social media uh, you are seen uh, with uh, ministers uh, you are seen with religious leaders uh, you are seen with uh, ngos uh, these meetings uh, what was the purpose for that uh, i think you explained that it was fact finding you were trying to explain your concept of casino but was all these meetings done above board and uh, nothing was hidden well nothing is hidden you know my social media on a page you can see that when we ever i meet people uh, we discuss things is already at it was on a social media on my facebook page nothing is hidden apart from that and as i s- said to another thing is that uh, that for me is that project is needed for the development of the country it's not that i'm working on a part of just an investor but also being a citizen of fiji my responsibility is that something that comes that help the country so if you have seen that when i presented the concept of the of the project a lot of bargain has happened between me and the company because initially the proposal is casino and the hotel but i went uh, about the board and said no you can't have that only 
uh, if we are putting this proposal to the government of there, how it benefits our country. So bring amusement park like a Disneyland because our, our children do not have in Fiji anything where they can go and visit. So I said bring that in because that will also create a better environment. Mm -hmm. Bring a culture show stage because when I was in China, I attended a culture show which regularly every day that culture show happens in hours and hours and hours. And uh, that, that gives an opportunity to the locals to present their culture, their tradition. So I said that has to be there. Rugby is one of the things that we, we all love. It's our dying heart sport. So I said to them that I want a rugby stadium because we do not have something into a rugby stadium that will actually bring the sports tourism here, the culture tourism here. And also as an amusement park having it in the country, it will attract not only local but a lot of diversifying in the tourism where the family bring their children because mm -hmm. currently we only have uh, what beaches, uh, you know, people to come and islands. Uh, people might spend one or three days or, or, or five days into their vacation but if, if we have those sort of activities it actually diversifies the tourism. So I work very hard in that aspect of consulting with the, with the, with the investors. In one of your social media posts uh, you were seen with uh, uh, cartons of groceries I believe uh, mm -hmm. uh, at the village of the former president of the Methodist Church. Yes. That to a normal person is enticing or, or, or giving a favor mm -hmm. in return for support for this project. Is, is that correct assumption? No, I, I, this is a baseless uh, actually the assumption. Uh, the Reverend Ely, I knew him uh, before even this project came in. Uh, and uh, we usually talk about things on uh, reconciliation and things has happened. And uh, the reason of uh, the distribution of the groceries pack was that because it was Christmas. And there is another investment that basically in line with it. And we wanted this investment to take it to the Ra province. This is a, a very big uh, car manufacturing in China. They do electrical car, the renewable energy car. And they wanted to have a base here for assemble, assembling of cars and for the Pacific and the Oceania market. It's a very good investment when I looked at it. At the moment, we are working on an on a initial assessment. Of course, I wanted to have the, the rural development where I thought that Ra province is a good province to, to be there and that to be developed. So when I visited this village, uh, of course, it was our call that in Christmas we need to provide some support. And it's not only in that village. I also visited the health center. Mm -hmm. On the way from Reki Reki to Lotoka, where I am from, I stopped by a lot of uh, you know small vendors selling vegetables on the roadside. I dropped them groceries. It's just the groceries to give them. because, And I uh, tell you to Anish, Anish that these groceries, when I took from extra, I was asking them, give something for these children that is that did not have it. It's like chocolates and cakes for, for the Christmas. So baseless, uh, I think it's a baseless uh, assumption that people have been putting on that. Uh, I, tr I respect him as a father figure and uh, a person that most respected for me, which is Revenant Ili Bunaswai. He mm. had achieved a lot for the nation. And at the same time during that, he, it was his ongoing president. So contribution that he made to the nation, uh, it was also for me have an opportunity to be with, with him in his village. Mm. You said you took a group of uh, church ministers to Macau uh, 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 and also uh, you mentioned in a press uh, statement that you will put pro part of the process into the great council of chiefs. Why is it important to have the chiefs? and the churches behind you in this project? Okay, so taking church to uh, Macau, uh, it was a decision because I have looked at some of the criticism which was made previously and the church was uh, critics about the, the casino, uh, even if the 2012 view had been taken back there. So I thought it is, uh, is, is important that uh, we invite the church ministers to actually look at the impact of casino. Uh, impact and how the fishing village, Macau, been now the uh, the Las Vegas of the East. So there's an you know assessment and all those things could be done. So that was the reason that the church ministers has been invited uh, for that trip. And now going to uh, sorry, what was your Great Council of Chiefs. Okay. Now going back to the Great Council of Chiefs. This is my proposal which I'm drafting at the moment. So uh, to make it best for the country and getting the, the better opportunity for people. So I drafted a proposal with at the moment. So there was like we proposing to the government that the, uh, the 10 over revenue, that, sorry, the 10 over tax 
of gambling is five uh, percent to the government because previous license in 212 was one percent so i said it will benefit more so we put five percent for the government we put another four percent was that we form one trust a charity trust so this is called a charity levy uh, that was also part of the last license if you look at so charity trust and the four percent of the net income will actually go to the charity trust and that trust will then work to help the people in, in basic development apart from the revenue that the government gets from the tax and then one percent I put for the GCC because this was an uh, aim was that you know I, I had uh, my own uh, initiative that we want the village to develop the village development program which I'm talking before I took this project even the last year during the election time a village development and so for that reason the one percent was allocated and uh, this was again with the negotiations with the owners that we provide some fund because this is very critical that if in one year we able to develop a 10 village with one million dollars each this will help the lives of the villages and Anish the reason I did that during election when I went to a village for election campaign time I, I saw inside the house in the village had nothing mm. you know there was no television there was no sofa there was no cooking facility and there was no freezer and I see that how can we let our younger generation lived in the village while they do not have anything there and the migration of the youths from the villages coming to the urban areas and for that reason I put that project is nothing to anybody to uh, saying that we are going against GSCC or we want to you know bribe GCC no it is a simple proposal and when the Prime Minister has said that uh, it cannot be done well that is also respected because what we will do now on our proposal with the we put the five percent directly to the trust and that trust where people may be uh, you know request from civic organization, church, religious organization, and from the government to form a trust so that money can actually equally distribute where it is needed. Mm. What is the dollar value of this 5%? Have you done a projection? Yes, sir. Uh, dollar value of the 5% is around $25 million. Annually? Annually, yes. Sir. Okay. You have said uh, locals will not be allowed to go into the casinos, uh, only those who come from overseas, uh, if you are looking at the Vista arrivals, currently it's about 900,000 or 1 million. Mm. What percentage of tourists do you think will come to your casino if it's built? Okay, uh, at the moment uh, with the discussions with investor, our promotion of tourism will be from China. So it will increase the number of tourism. Right now we have the basic tourism from Australia and New Zealand. I have no idea that what of the percentage that will attract to the current tourism. So if I look at, it will not affect any current tourism arrivals. It will increase the tourism arrival, which will be, you know, richer tourism arrival. And the target was the China market. Uh, so that, at the moment, we are working on that. So currently on a monthly basis, uh, I believe 1,500 Chinese come to Fiji. What, what's the number you're looking at if the casino uh, is built? Our proposal says that if to Fiji today has a 1 million tourists, in five years we can triple the figure of tourism. Uh, that was our proposal that we are putting. So how, how many tourists from Japan, uh, how many tourists from China? We are expecting, uh, there's a lot of thing discussion. In, you know, China do not have a direct flight from mm -hmm. Fiji at the moment. That is only from Hong Kong. So in our proposal that we put it over there, that it will increase the tourism, it might be 800 to a million tourists we can increase but of course there are other matters that has to look into consideration where the direct flights and other aspects to put on place so at least we can able to promote the Chinese tourism. Mm. You could have uh, proposed a hotel, you could have proposed the stadium, you could propose the amusement center, mm. leave the casino out for the time being mm. and mm. get on with the project. Once you are ready then come for a casino license. Why, why, did, why didn't you take the part? Sir, the company David Group, their core business is casino. So there is no way that I can tell investor that remove your core business and uh, put things that I'm proposing. Uh, it is it is really difficult. You know, uh, the investors has their own core business, their own investment, their own interest in business, and therefore it is impossible that I could have actually told the investor to remove the casino. But as I said, that we're trying to do as best that a better regulation be set up in if the casinos are accepted, better regulation be set up, better guidelines be set up, so it will uh, benefit uh, as, as far as our country in terms of revenue generation and in terms of also the business where the investor is investing in the country. Mm. Given what the Prime Minister said that it will, time, it will take time for the government to draw policies, uh, it may take time. Uh, how long are you 
we are willing to wait. At the moment, we are uh, discussing with the with the investor. We have invited the group CEO to visit Fiji. I think mid of January he will be here. We are also requesting an appointment with the Prime Minister while the group CEO is here, and we on that we might able to see that the time frame of the the process and the policy it might takes and if we see that is favorable in a sense of that it not take gonna take two to three years if the policy guide guidelines are set i really encourage the investor to start with other business and while waiting for the process of casino license so at least because uh, investors are also little disappointed because people putting so much on social that this is scam and this and that whatever so investors has told me that sandeep if there is a positive that the government will look at in accordance to the rules and regulation and we abide by the rules and regulation so we can start our other investment of tourism aspect and move on uh, but again there was also a statement if it cannot happen in fiji of course, it's a business decision. I can't hold the investor that to stay here in Fiji because there is no option for that. And then there is other countries that are currently in looked in. Mm. So when when do you think your investor will say, okay, let's pack up Fiji is not the right place to be putting money in? I think we can make a decision upon submission of our official proposal. So uh, I have decided that I'll be submitting the proposal to the government of the day tomorrow official proposal not an application so people need to remember it's not an application for license it's a proposal of, of the project and uh, seeking the prime minister's office and the government of the day that you draw your guidelines and your policies and once it is done uh, in accordance to that we will apply for a license mm -hmm. so that will be submitted tomorrow our CEO will be the, the David Group CEO will visit uh, on January 9th or between 16th to the country. Maybe at that time we can make decision whether we stay or not. They, they stay in Fiji or not. So it's not not, not my decision. Again, uh, you know, I did best from last year August to consult with those people, looking at their financials and saying that this do this do this do that. So it will attract employment creation, generate revenues, uh, regulate the casino. Okay, not to allow the locals to play if there's a concern and raise that local might spend their own money so I'm, I'm putting it that how the people are telling this should not be this this should not be that and I'm respecting all that and I was very uh, so, you know uh, happy that our investor has also and investor has clearly said Sandeep you know our casino players are spending millions of dollars they will not be looking at 200 300 dollars to be spent by the locals so I think so far uh, how we designing a proposal to the government of the day it is something that people should uh, looked into that because uh, looking at the nation's condition as you know the Prime Minister has recently spoke out we have 10.3 billion dollar debt and I think 1 billion dollar plus was just only borrowed mm -hmm. from A to B uh, is because of our service and also the uh, the interest that we are paying if this is the way we do uh, or we just try to desperate the investors not to be in the country we will not able to generate the revenue I saw people has mentioned yesterday someone spoke or somebody was in a media article that Nandi needs uh, a botanical garden and a museum. But for that you need an investor or a revenue for the government. Well putting this investment which I am bringing it, uh, this will generate a revenue if you look at a 5% gambling tax. Uh, which is a gross uh, normally gambling tax are on gross. It generates about 70 million to 100 million dollars annually. Apart from that, we have a 15 million something like a net uh, that goes to the charity. So this brings a lot of revenue for the government. If we regulate this and a better guidelines be put into place on the safety and the security of our people in Fiji, the revenue can be then utilized for the services because we need money for road, we need money for agriculture support, we need money for the poor villages, rural development, but we need as well revenue. So people need to understand that government is there as facilitator. They can't just print money and give it to you. Mm -hmm. The government needs also to generate revenue. So what we are doing, we're trying to bring an investor that generate revenue for the government of the day, and then it can deliver into services. Finally, Sandeep, uh, for me to believe you, and maybe for the Fijians to believe you, uh, you're a consultant for the David Group. For sake of transparency, are you able to reveal how much are you being paid? Yes, I revealed it actually. Mm -hmm. I have revealed it during my press conference that the uh, my professional fee for the project was $1 million, which I have dedicated to one model village. 
uh, if you look at my press statement, I said that this was a savings fee. Initially, the savings fee was only 500,000, but I said to them that I have one initiative, which I want one of the village to be designed as a model, modernized village. So they said, how much it gonna cost you? I said, it might be 500 to $1 million. So they said to me, whatever it will cost, either it's a more than a million dollars, th that will be contributed to uh, a village that I will choose to modernize because we want to show the country and especially to our Ethiopia community that how the, the living in the village, proper you know, water facility, proper house, facilities in the house, the, the electricity and all those kind of things. So that is that I have dedicated my entire uh, the, uh, the fee, the professional fee to that modernization. And again, this modernization will happen immediately. As soon as the license will be issued, it will immediately happen. You not have to wait the revenue of the fund. Mm -hmm. This is immediately will happen. So you're not making any cent out no, of this? No, no. 100%? 100%. I'm the on your heart? On my heart. I'm a Ganesh devotee and I'm, I'm a very honest person. And for that reason, I'm not making any single cent. Of course, they pay for our trips when we visit China and food and all those kind of things. I'm not paid any. And I am willing to, when I, uh, if this project is completed, I can willing to provide my statements to you to have a see that there's nothing is paid to Mr. Sandeep and uh, everything that we have done, it's done for the development in a spec because when I came back after nine years, I see that people are still poor. People's wealth has not been equally divided. There are only few people that runs the nation economically and the country is getting poor and poor. And Anish, I want to reveal this because I'm from Lotoka, from Johnson Road, where Matwalu village is. I grew up in fam friends with Matwalu village. I was an adopted son of Nandele village in Sameto. And when I came back after nine years, we actually have two way road in Johnson Road. And I visited after nine years, that road becomes so narrow to one, one way. And even one way we have jungles on the side. So I said to myself, Sandeep, what development it happens in the last 16 years? It's nothing there. We are going backwards rather than we're going forwards. And that's the reason when this investment came to me, I took an opportunity to look into it. And I'm preparing in a proposal in, t in a way that would help the country grow. So will that one million go towards Nandele village or Matawalu village? Uh, no. Uh, my choice of village, I want to name it, my choice of village is Vesesi. Vesesi village. Why I chose Vesesi village, to be honest, uh, when I was young, they had a very nice handicraft market outside. The ladies were selling handicraft, buzzes stopped there. Nothing there now. And uh, I usually go to Vesesi village. I have a lot of friends there. And uh, that's the reason I choose the Vesesi village because I want to develop. Another thing, it is again a village of uh, Dr. Timothy Bavandra. So I really wanted to put on that. Sandeep, thank you very much for speaking to me. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless.